So today we are going to discuss a few important developments in the field of medicine. One of them is in the domain of hypertension, the other one in type 1 diabetes mellitus. Now there is a drug called Bextrostat. Bextrostat is an aldosterone synthase inhibitor. Aldosterone is the hormone which is uh, the final pathway in the pathogenesis of hypertension. And there are large number of patients who are not controlled on large number of drugs. So if any patient who is not controlled on three drugs including a diuretic, the blood pressure is still more than 130-80, this patient can be offered Bextrostat. This enzyme inhibitor uh, prevents the synthesis of aldosterone. We have been trying for a large number of years a drug which could inhibit aldosterone synthase. The problem was the aldosterone synthase shares a large amount of amino acid sequence with cortisol synthase. So any drug which causes the inhibition of uh, aldosterone synthase would result in the inhibition of the cortisol synthase as well. So patient would have at the same time cortisol deficiency as well. So this problem was going on. Now with the uh, development of this drug, Baxdrostat, which has a very high affinity for aldosterone synthase, almost 100 to 1. So that means the cortisol will not be affected and the clinical trial has shown that patients who are put on this uh, Baxdrostat do not show a drop in the cortisol level. So this may be a very good drug for patients who have been on hypertension and they are uncontrolled. So this is one development. And the second development is even more dramatic, is for type 1 diabetes mellitus. You see type 1 diabetes mellitus is a disease in which there is destruction of the beta cells in the pancreas by the autoimmune mechanism. That is the body's own defense system destroys the beta cell and it is through the T lymphocytes. Now there is a drug t zeal which has been developed which can help us in uh, this type 1 diabetes. When we see type 1 diabetes we see this has three phases. There is phase 1, phase 2 and phase 3. Phase 1 is when there is only evidence of autoimmunity that is we check the patient you may find antibodies against the different components of insulin producing mechanism that is the beta cells. And then in the second phase there is dysglycemia that is the blood sugar starts becoming abnormal. This is stage 2 and we can see this on blood sugar testing for example the patient's OGT may be abnormal or the hemoglobin A1C may be abnormal but the patient still does not have symptoms. And the stage 3 is when the patient starts having those classical symptoms that is polyuria, polydipsia, weight loss and there is polyphagia. So we have three phases when there is only autoimmunity. The second phase is when the patient has abnormal blood sugar, the patient does not have physical symptoms and the third stage is when the patient has physical symptoms. Now this new drug branded by the name t or teplizumab is one which inhibits the T lymphocytes from attacking the beta cells. This drug acts on the epsilon, epsilon chain of the CD3 uh, portion of the T cell receptor complex on the surface of the T cells and prevents the T cells from attacking the beta cells. So this drug has been tried for a long time and we have now uh, a trial published recently which indicates that when this drug is used the onset of type 1 diabetes can be delayed by almost two years. So this drug doesn't mean that this will abort or abolish the chances of developing type 1 diabetes, but we have found that it can delay the onset of type 1 diabetes in a vulnerable population. And how to find the vulnerable population, it is a slightly difficult question because uh, the whole of the population cannot be screened for type 1 diabetes. So the people who are more vulnerable to type 1 diabetes can be screened. For example, relatives of patients who are type 1 diabetics or patients who've got asthma or patients who've got celiac disease, those patients are having uh, more chances of developing type 1 diabetes. So these patients can be screened and they can be offered this treatment. This drug is at the moment tried 
on patients who are eight years or older. And you see, this is a fantastic uh, development. This gives us an avenue to look into the possibility of future development of further refined medications which can affect this autoimmune process and stop the development of type 1 diabetes. And not only the type 1 diabetes, uh, the disease which are occurring through a similar mechanism, we can also uh, design drugs to, uh, for those diseases as well. So those diseases which are because of the autoimmune phenomena, we may be in the future able to control uh, the development of these diseases through these uh, uh, type of drugs. So this is a monoclonal antibody which can prevent or which can cause delay in the appearance of symptoms of type 1 diabetes. That is the patients they are progressing from stage 2 into stage 3. This, this drug can prevent the progress from stage 2 to stage 3 and this, uh, this is uh, the recent development and we may see in future there are further more developments in this uh, concept. So this is about the two new developments in the field of diabetes and hypertension and keep in mind one thing that this drug is not used for type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes has its own different ways of uh, prevention for example lifestyle modification weight control and regular physical activity so this drug is not used for type 2 diabetics this is for type 1 diabetics who require insulin for their life so this is about the uh, new developments